Okay, and I've got to share my screen now. I forgot to do that last time. Um, where am I? There I am. Okay. Alrighty. Um, oh yeah, and I want to change my view. How did I do that? There we go. Okay. Okay, I think uh, I think I'm all ready to go. YouTube is going, and I'm on Discord. Okay, awesome. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk a little bit about how to record a PDF. Um, in pretty much all of my classes, at some point or another, uh, somebody has asked for me to cover this, just to cover some of the software involved in recording a PDF. Um, so the first maybe 20, 30 minutes of this class is just going to be covering uh, Dropbox, how to use Dropbox and how to use their PDF software. Um, so if you've already, like if you already have a system for making PDFs and it seems to work fine and you're not really interested in trying something new, then uh, you might want to just maybe hit, hit pause or something or, or go get a snack or something like that because that's what we're going to be talking about for a little while. Um, I do encourage you to think about using Dropbox if you don't use it already. Um, Dropbox can be used for many other things aside from just recording PDFs. Um, so yeah, I, I, hope that, I hope that this is relevant to uh, at least a, a, a few of you. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, if, if you do plan on using this as like a tutorial, this, this video will be archived on YouTube so you, you could um, go back and um, just watch it after the fact. I tried to make a video on this over the weekend, but I like I, I recorded everything and, and while I was editing it, it just seemed really like long and convoluted and confusing. So then I thought that I, I would re refilm it and, and all that and then I just decided that's it's too much work. I'm gonna like talk to you guys anyways and I'm you know I, I put I put almost four hours of, of YouTube on uh, or, or four hours of content on YouTube every day. So I figured, why am I putting out one more video when I'm already, you know, um, like you're gonna be here anyway. So uh, I, I might make the title of this video, um, you know, like how to use uh, Dropbox and then just have some links in the description on, on how to sort of uh, fast forward to the important bits. Anyway, um, yeah, so let's, let's start talking about um, uh, Desmos, or not Desmos, um, I want to be in this one, yeah. Uh, Dropbox. So um, the first thing that we're going to talk about is what Dropbox is and how do you get it? Dropbox.com. Come on, Dropbox. Doesn't have autocomplete. Weird. Um, anyway, so uh, so what Dropbox is is it's a cloud service. So you can use it to store your files online. Um, it's it's really really good at doing that. Uh, it's you know they were they were one of the first big companies to actually start making this uh, this uh, service and then I mean Google has been around for quite some time and their their Google Drive has has been around for as far as I understand quite a bit longer than Dropbox. However, Dropbox did introduce a lot of really important uh, features such as incorporating your files into your operating system so that uh, if you have something on your uh, Dropbox then immediately it's on your computer like like the very second uh, your computer can um, download it it'll start to download it and then you'll have a copy of it on your computer as well as having these kind of like ghost files too so if you're concerned about how much space uh, your Dropbox is is going to take on your computer. You can have it sort of have like these placeholder files on your on your computer, so that it uh, it doesn't actually download the file. It's just like an empty file. And when you want to use it, like when you double click it, then it'll open and just download the file as you need it. So there's a lot of really cool features that Dropbox um, introduced, like that one. That that feature is now used on OneDrive, and it's also used on. Uh, Google Drive as well, so um, yeah, like like it doesn't really offer anything super unique right now because all these other services have sort of copied them. But they were really pushing the uh, the uh, enterprise business um, of of you know these these really important features and sort of rolling them out to consumers first. So they've really done a good job of uh, of you know thinking about what what cloud. Uh, 
cloud storage looks like and, and how to make it better. So so that's kind of why I've I've been using them for the past few years is because they've been offering really important features. Um, so I guess I guess that's enough about Dropbox. That's what they are. They're just it's a place to store your files online. You can access your files on your phone or a, a, a tablet or a PC like a Windows, Mac, Linux, any any kind of computer uh, will be able to access Dropbox files. So um, you can get a free Dropbox account uh, by going to Dropbox.com, and then you might notice that. Um, there is something here called Dropbox Basic. And Dropbox Basic, that's right here. I don't know why this thing is so big. Weird. Um, Dropbox Basic is just the, the free version of their service. So we'll, we'll sign up for Dropbox Basic. And this gives you two gigabytes of storage. And there are, there are several ways of getting more storage for free. Most of them are pretty annoying, like, emailing your friends and asking them to sign up but uh, you know if you have like a you know you're like some parents or an aunt or uncle or something you can always just send them an email and then uh, and then just ask them to sign up so that you get more more free space um, you also pay money to get more space but uh, I know that not all of us are interested in that so I'm gonna sort of ignore that part so you can sign up for free um, so basically you just have to give them your name make an, uh, a password with an email uh, agree to their terms and then create an account um, so you can go over their terms here um, as far as I've been able to tell Dropbox is a very good company like I'm, I'm not concerned about uh, privacy uh, or anything like that with Dropbox and I would consider myself someone who's who's fairly uh, privacy uh, oriented so I these sorts of things matter a lot to me and, and they have a fairly good privacy policy so you can check that out if you're interested um, but I know most of you probably won't uh, and then if you want you can also sign up with Google so if you have a Gmail account or something uh, or any kind of Google account including your Winnipeg school division email address it, it has a, a Google account associated with it um, so you can you can uh, just use Google to sign in and that has the added benefit of security so Dropbox is a great company uh, but they do not have the same uh, sort of horsepower as Google and and with Google like Google is very very secure like your Google account is one of the most secure accounts that you can have on the internet and so to, to let Google handle all of the authentication has a lot of benefits. So uh, I would suggest if you have a Google account, signing up with it, and, and you actually do have a Google account associated with your uh, Winnipeg School Division email address. So I would suggest uh, signing up with Google. Once you have it, um, it's fairly straightforward to use. So what I thought I would do, since I, I imagine that most of you would probably be using your phone for like 99% of, of your electronic daily use. Um, I get the impression that, that a lot of you are, are using your phone primarily as your electronic device. Um, so if that's the case, um, I, I, think, I think it's good to, to sort of carry this tutorial on uh, on the phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, turn the camera on my iPad and then you'll be able to see what the Dropbox app looks like on uh, the phone. So of course the Dropbox app is free. It's, it's on any uh, kind of app store or, or Play Store or whatever you wanna call it. Um, so it's, it's very easy to access. They're a fairly large company so they're, they're um, yeah, their they're, uh, software works on pretty much anything. Um, you'll have to Excuse my ugly desk here. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just put this. Pardon me? Well, not really. It's kind of got all these ugly scratches on them. I have another desktop, but uh, it um, it has a varnish on it that's like really stinky. So I uh, I put it I put it in the basement while it dried off, and then anyway. Um, so okay, yeah, I was gonna show you my uh, my screen. So this is this is my Dropbox account. So there's a, a bunch of tabs down here, like uh, home. It just kind of talks about like some of the recent files that you've you've been using, things like that. Um, you can look at photos over here. I have my uh, my Dropbox account. Uh, I I don't necessarily recommend it. Um, I have um, some needs that uh, you know Dropbox fits really well for me. Um, 
I started using Dropbox Plus several years ago. And it's one of those things, once you start using it, it's hard to stop using it. So I wouldn't actually recommend using Dropbox Plus. I would just see if you could stick with the free plan and try to get any free space using their incentives if, if you actually want to use this long term for like a, you know for, for bigger files. I think you can get uh, probably about 10 gigabytes for free uh, so long as you sort of weasel your way through their uh, incentives. Um, and then, yeah, you can see I've got 30, I don't know how long I've been using it, maybe seven years. Uh, and then there's a few uh, uh, features that are useful. You can have files offline so that if you don't uh, have an internet connect PDF. And this is, it's a really great feature. Oops, I don't want to sign out. No, I want to take a, uh, so yeah, they let you either take a photo. You could use the Dropbox app to take a photo. Um, I don't know why you would do that when you have the camera app. But anyways, uh, you, that's an option. You can do scan document, which is what we're gonna do. There's a few other things you could do as well. So you could record audio, upload a whole bunch of photos. Um, if you have another file uh, on your phone uh, that's accessible uh, through the operating system, then you can, you can try to find it. Um, they make it really easy. Uh, you know, the first couple times you try it, you, it might not work out perfectly for you, but after after you do it a few times, it goes by very easily. So, um, what I thought we could do is I'm just I'm just going to grab an old book of mine. Um, I'll try to choose sort of like a random page that has some interesting stuff on it. How about this? Ooh, what an existential question! What is a number? Ooh asking the big questions. Okay, so uh, this is from a class that I taught um, at the University of Winnipeg, um, I think in 2016, 2017, a few years ago. Anyway, so here's what the, uh, the, the document looks like, and I'm gonna use my phone to, uh, to make a PDF. So, um, yeah, let's, let's try this out. Okay, it's kind of hard to manage two screens at once, but I think I've, I've got it. Okay, so there, so you can kind of see that the, the, the processor is trying to sort of figure out where the edges are, and it's not doing the best job, but that's okay. So I think what happened there is that it thought that the, that this, this uh, sort of contrast difference was the top of the page. So what it's doing is it's looking for little pieces of contrast where it can see kind of a square, and it probably thought that that was the top of the page. So it didn't do a super good job of, of uh, cropping the top edge, but the other edges are very good. Like it, it cropped it very well. And you can make any kind of adjustments with this button right here. So you can see, yeah, it, it thought that the little mouse pad there was the top of the page, but it wasn't. So I'll just move this down here and I'll move that one down here. And there you have it. And oh, it looks like maybe this one could come up a little bit higher. That looks better. And then we'll hit done. And there's the first page. Simple as that. Now, uh, if you want, you can add other pages by uh, pressing this button down in the uh, left corner. So click that right there. And then let's try the next page. So I just gotta make a little more room for myself. There we go. Okay, it looks like it's got the edge of the page there and it'll automatically take the picture once it's fairly certain that that's the edges of the, the paper. And yeah, that looks good. So then the, the, next, the, the next bit is just kind of what you would think. You would save, uh, you, you know, you give it a, a, a file name. You can, I'll sit back down now. You can give it a, a file name. You can give it, um, uh, you know, you can choose the, the quality. Um, I usually keep it at maximum quality, but if, if you want to save a little space, you can go down to medium. Um, and then they've got some recently used folders. Uh, I'm just going to save it right into my Dropbox folder. So, uh, yeah, there it is. The, the, your Dropbox folder is just like the root of, the, of the, their file system. And then you can hit save. And okay, so there it is right there. Um, I guess I didn't really name it anything important. So I'll just click it right there. And there you have it. So there's our, our document. So I'd say it looks pretty good. I'll do this. It looks really good. So um, so yeah, that's, that's really handy. Another cool thing too that you can do with Dropbox is that um, you can share the documents very easily. 
Um, so if I wanted to share this document, I can hit these little three dots. And what, what you can do is you can create a link. So I'll just hit copy link and it's, it's gonna create a link. And um, so this link is a, a link that you can just put right into a URL, so like into a web browser, and then it'll just open that, that file, which is really handy. Um, so let's see if I can do that. I'll do copy link, yeah. Yeah, and then you can uh, just paste that link into your web browser. I'll just, I'll just do that really quick. Just open up a new tab here, okay. And then, uh, yeah, you can just type in, yeah, link you copy, there it is. So it's a Dropbox link, and it's probably gonna auto open, yeah, it's gonna want to open in, in my Dropbox. It, it recognizes that I have the app, or I guess it wants me to get the app, but I already have it. But you can click continue to website. And there's, there's the file accessible. So um, it makes it really easy to share documents. Um, also, if you have Dropbox installed on your computer, um, yeah, if, if you have Dropbox installed on your computer, then it will automatically just be on your, your computer, just ready to go. Um, so that's, that's really nice. Um, so I would, I would highly recommend getting a Dropbox account or at least having some kind of um, account that you use for uh, you know cloud saving because um, you know it's a great way just to back everything up and then you have a, a you know peace of mind that you're not going to lose your documents. Um, it can be really disheartening losing your files and having uh, Dropbox uh, save that for you it can save you a lot of hurt. So I'm gonna go back over here. Here we go. Um, just a, a couple more notes about Dropbox that I want to uh, mention is um, uh, it's really good for schoolwork because uh, you know you can you can save all of your your files for all of your classes and you know have them have them nicely organized by year and by class and then you have that basically forever right you, your Dropbox account isn't gonna go anywhere and um, so if you save all of your documents on there, then it's, it's nice to have as a little archive. Um, I have uh, quite a few documents in my Dropbox um, that I've, you know, that I use regularly over the, over the years. I'll show you, I'll show you what my, my school one looked like. So these are all the different degrees that I've, I've, I've had, uh, uh, except I guess the research folder isn't really a degree. But if I wanted to go back to like my, my bachelor of education, I've got you know, my year one, year two, all my evaluations. Um, these are the classes that I took in them. Some classes had more files than others, right? Like this one didn't have a whole lot, um, but which one was it? Um, yeah, I think school systems had a few file, you know, and it's just a nice way to organize all of your, your documents from each class over all your years. So that's, that's you know, one degree that I had and then another degree would be, you know, this one here. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really nice way of um, saving all of your documents. So yeah, I even, I have, you know, an old, old um, assignment that I did from, who knows? Yeah, six years ago. So, um, so yeah, I, I think that Dropbox is a, a really, really good service. I, I highly recommend it to uh, anybody who um, you know likes to make sure that their their documents are safe and that you can access them uh, anywhere in the world. You can share them very easily as well. Um, so, I, I would totally recommend getting a Dropbox account. Um, another thing too, you could you could also use Google Drive. I know that Google Drive has uh, pretty much all the same features as Dropbox. Um, one of the the things about uh, Google Drive that is a little bit better is that they give you more space right off the hop. I think just a general account has something like ten or fifteen gigabytes, so so that's really good. So um, it doesn't really have to be Dropbox. I guess I'm I'm kind of using Dropbox as a placeholder for just uh, you know cloud backup system. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wonder, I wonder if, if you guys already do this sort of thing. Like in high school, like when I was in high school, like the internet was like very much like a, a, a new thing. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess it wasn't like a new thing, new thing, but it, it wasn't what it what is today. Um, and certainly things like a, a cloud-based backup system 
would would not have even crossed anyone's mind. Um, like, if you were able to save it onto like a USB thumb drive, then you'd be like ahead of the game, you know. Um, so uh, yeah, I wonder if maybe you guys are already using this, and and I'm kind of like preaching to the choir. But it seemed like a lot of people didn't know how to make a PDF, which which kind of led me to believe that a lot of you probably don't know what Dropbox is, because if you did have Dropbox, then um, then maybe you uh, would have would have known how to make a PDF already because it it's kind of hard to ignore that um, that create button right there. Um, so so yeah, I, I hope this was was at least a little bit useful. I hope that that maybe you're uh, inspired to uh, make a nice organized list of all of your classes and everything uh, like I have here. Um, I mean I I I love the fact that that. All of the school that I've, I've done since university is just nicely archived and organized and, and any assignment, any kind of uh, document that I made or received, uh, it's, all, it's all here and I can always go back. Um, uh, I can always go back and, and adjust it. Oh, so you know about Dropbox from uh, Sims mods. So I guess, I guess people who are modding uh, the Sims, they have Dropbox. I think that most of the mods that I use for the video games that I play. They're usually Google Drive. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, either Google Drive or, or like Mega. Um, but uh, yeah, Dropbox is a, a fantastic service. Um, I kind of feel like like maybe I should like reach out to Dropbox and see if I could get a paid promotion because this video is like a total uh, advertisement for, for Dropbox. But I really do stand by it. It's uh, It saved me uh, a lot. One, I mean, the free account is great, and I'm not trying to convince you to, to pay money, but um, in the one of the, the features of the Dropbox Plus account is um, uh, backup service. So they give you free backup service. And it seems weird, like, oh, like why, why would you have a backup on your backup, right? If, if Dropbox is supposed to be like a backup, why, why do you need an extra backup service? Well, truth is, Dropbox isn't really a backup. It's, it's kind of like the this is where I save my files. Like all my files are on Dropbox. Not all of them, but and and I, I've actually sort of been using different cloud services throughout this year um, because uh, well I, I won't get into it, but um, uh, there's different benefits of different different uh, cloud services. So I have shifted some of my data over to different clouds. But one great thing about Dropbox is that their their Plus account provides uh, backup software. So um, if you delete a file accidentally from your Dropbox, like if you, even if you just remove it from your Dropbox, um, they'll save it, I think, for up to one year. So th I, I can't tell you uh, how relieved I am to have used that service once or twice. Um, I, I, obviously, that's not something you would want to use ever, um, and I've only used it, uh, I think, two times. But it, boy, having a lost file can be completely devastating like that can make you like that can ruin your day that could even ruin uh, it, it almost ruined um, I mean I don't want to get into, into huge details but it almost ruined uh, a, a class that uh, that I, I was going to teach uh, maybe about five years ago we deleted all of the files accidentally or someone on our team had had accidentally removed all of these files um, which we didn't have backed up anywhere else, but we, we just called up Dropbox and we were like, yeah, there's this folder that was accidentally uh, removed from a shared uh, sort of thing because you can have shared folders. And uh, we, had, we had it back up like immediately. It, 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 as, as soon as we just recognized that this was a missing file, uh, we were able to search for it and then boom, it was back in our Dropbox. Um, and, and the nice thing about that is that they don't really consider that space yours so even like if you had like a your, your whole Dropbox full and then you deleted all of it and then you filled it back up with new stuff you'd still be able to search for the old stuff so they don't, they don't count the backed up um, data as data uh, on your quota so uh, so yeah it's a fantastic service I love Dropbox very much and their PDF software I think is really good um, there's probably better uh, options out there but the nice thing about Dropbox is that it's totally cross-platform. It'll work on uh, 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 iOS. It'll work on iPad OS. It'll work on Android, uh, Windows, Linux, Mac OS. Um, 
yeah, it, it's completely cross-platform, really easy to use, it's free, so I, I, I can't think of a reason not to use Dropbox. So definitely consider it. Um, we have some PDFs to submit uh, very soon. Um, yeah, I was just saying I should be sponsored. They should really um, uh, give me money. Uh, <laughs> but no, no they, they, they shouldn't. Um, yeah, okay, so uh, I was just saying that, yeah, you're going to have to submit some PDFs very soon. So um, uh, uh, sometime this week I'll be uh, putting out a new assignment, uh, in which case you would need to submit a PDF, uh, as well as the Part A of our final assessment, the topic map. Um, you could do that on, on the computer if you wanted to, um, but I would imagine that most of you would want to do it on, on paper and pencil and then turn that into a PDF. So... Um, that's how I would recommend doing it. Like I said, there's there's many ways of doing it. Um, there's there's ways that you could use a computer as well. I know that with Google Docs, you can just import photos. So you could that's another option is that you could just use Google Docs and um, oh grade eleven uh, yeah you could use Google Docs and uh, just import your photos into Google Docs and adjust the contrast and crop them all in Google Docs. But that's a lot of work. Um, I think that it's actually easier just to stick with Dropbox so um, so yeah those are the um, those are our options so um, last week we started uh, or I guess we, we kind of finished up with um, reciprocal functions and absolute value functions and that kind of thing so what we're gonna do today is uh, we're gonna do some trigonometry um, yeah so we're gonna we're gonna go back I think it's chapter 3 I believe chapter three and I kind of I mean I really don't like rushing but but this this is a this should be like a big big topic we're gonna turn it into a small topic okay so that's that's what we're gonna do um, we're gonna kind of just look at some of the essential bits of trigonometry and then um, call it a day um, and then if we have enough time uh, we will get into um, these systems uh, of equations which are at the back of the book chapters 8 and 9 systems of equations and inequalities and, and that's a really fun topic so uh, I really hope that we have enough time to get through that a um, couple uh, of things just uh, before we get started um, just some housekeeping items um, so as for our uh, final exam um, I got some information saying that our, our final exam and also the due date of the final project uh, has to be before June 19th. So uh, it has to be in less than a month. So uh, I will be getting a date to you this week about when our final exam is and when the final project would be due. Those, that's the same day, so um, I'll only give you one date. Um, but it will be uh, uh, probably within the week before June 19th. So uh, June 19th, oh yeah, I don't have my mouse connected to my computer anymore. Wait a second. Come on. There you are. Okay. Um, June 19th is a Friday, so it'll probably be somewhere between the 15th and the 19th of June. So um, uh, I will come up with a date uh, this week and I'll put that on Google Classroom. So that's for our, uh, our, our, our due dates. Um, and I think that was about it. Yeah, so I will be coming out with a, uh, a, a date and also a rubric for the final exam this week. So the, the rubric should be a good guide to sort of help you, uh, um, you know, walk yourself through some of um, the these project ideas that, that you might be having. Um, and just maybe it'll help you uh, choose the right topics to cover on your project and that sort of thing. Because yeah, a, a few students have been asking me if they should be starting their project yet. And I think that it's a good idea to start thinking about your project and thinking about some of the things that that you could do, um, but I would I would um, before you actually really jump into the meat of it, I think it's important to um, 
I think it's important to, uh, to have an idea of, of how it's going to be graded. Um, and that's not so much because I want you to get a good grade and, and I, it's not it's not because things should be driven about the grade but but I do have some idea of, of how we can have this project um, represent the most amount of our learning so that's why I want you to, to wait for the the rubric not because I I'm, like I want you to, to focus on grades and, and the final grade that you're gonna get I mean that is important to you um, I'm, a, I'm a student right now I'm taking a class right now and my grade is really important to me. I, I really want to have a good grade. And, and I, I know that that's important to you too. I'm not saying that your grade isn't important, but what I am saying is that what should be driving you is, is the, your ability to uh, demonstrate your learning. And I like to think that the rubric that I've made will really help you think about how you can demonstrate your learning. So that's why I think you should wait to get a rubric. Not because I want you to like focus on, on how, it, like just follow these 10 easy steps to get 99.9% .9 on your final exam. No, it's not like that. Like I'm not just gonna be giving you instructions on what to do so you can get a good grade. I've just thought about the best ways of, 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 you, of you demonstrating your learning. Um, so, so that's why I would, I would wait. Um, okay, and I wanna switch my screen a little bit. There we go, okay, that's better. Okay, um, that was a lot of talking, um, and now I'll do some more talking. That's that's pretty much all my teaching is nowadays. It's just me talking, setting a timer, talking some more, setting another timer, etc. Okay, um, are there any questions before I move on? I'm mostly just saying that because I want to break from talking. If you have a question, please ask. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I hear a guitar hero pick. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, uh, we're gonna talk about trigonometry. Um, so, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna be giving you like the Coles Notes version of trigonometry. Um, I'm really just boiling it down to just some like essential facts that we're going to need. Uh, and, and it breaks my heart because I really do love trigonometry and, and it is just a really beautiful topic and uh, it also comes up a lot and it never goes away. It's one of those topics that you can never escape trigonometry. Um, especially in the in the precalculus stream. So um, next year in grade 12 precalculus, trigonometry is going to be right in front of you. Um, so what I, I'm going to try to do now is just kind of show you the stuff that you will need for next year in trigonometry. Just some basic facts, how to do a few things, and um, some things that uh, you know. Uh, you have to memorize. Uh, there's some, you know, uh, memorizing kind of is a drag, but sometimes we just have to do it. Um, so that I, I'm going to show you some things to memorize and um, just a few basic concepts and that, and that kind of thing. So let's get started. So, um, so there's there's kind of two ways to, th to think about trigonometry. So one is with right angle triangles. Right angle triangles. Okay, so that's you know like. We would have something like this, and uh, this is something that you, you may have learned last year or the year before. Um, so with a right angle triangle, right, you have this, this nice right angle. Um, so here's our right angle. And then we would have some other angle on the triangle. Usually we would call that some Greek letter. Theta is, is kind of the, um, 
the, the angle. Uh, theta is, is often used, so that's a Greek letter. It's like a TH sound. Um, oh, uh, oh, a really good question was asked on YouTube. How's Goose doing and how is Kima doing? Um, well, uh, Goose is just taking a quick little cat nap right now. I'll just send you a quick pic. There she is. Just a quick little cat nap. Can you see the screen through? Oh yeah, you can, eh? Yeah, she's just been sleeping like all day. I think it's because it was a long weekend and both my wife and I were home all weekend and we were giving them lots of attention. So she's just exhausted. And I don't know where Kima is. She's probably in the bedroom. She likes to sleep in the bedroom. So yeah, good question. They're doing, they're doing just fine, a little tired, um, but uh, yeah, they're fine. Okay, so uh, so talking about uh, uh, angles and trigonometry and right angles and triangles and things like that, um, we had we had these these terms. Um, so with respect to the angle, we had a like a, a, a an angle that we focused on, which was the angle theta. So we would focus on the angle theta, and then with respect to this angle, we had different sides. Now the side that you probably remember the most is the hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse is the angle that is opposite to the right angle, okay? So that's the, the, uh, the, the hypotenuse. It's also the longest side of all three sides in the triangle. The other side that we had is adjacent. We had the adjacent side. Oh, sorry, not, that's not adjacent. What am I talking about? This is the opposite side, thank you. That is the opposite side. So this is opposite to our angle, right? So it's, it's the, the side that's furthest away from our angle. And then last but not least is the adjacent, adjacent side right there. And that's, it's called the adjacent side. Adjacent, if you didn't know, means, literally means beside. So I'll, I'll just write beside. Okay, so it's it's a, a called the adjacent angle or side because it is beside the angle, right? It's it's touching the angle. It's it's part of the, the angle itself. And then uh, once once we kind of establish those sides, then we learn about the different trig ratios. Um, so we would have sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Then we had cos of theta, which is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. And then finally we had tan of theta, which is equal to um, opposite over adjacent. Okay, so uh, you know, you've probably seen this before, but we have this nice little saying, so ka toa, right? So so this, this is basically what I, I need you to memorize. So so this this stuff right here, is like the the memory stuff okay so this is what what you need to sort of commit to memory in order to um, understand what we're going to be doing over the next couple of days so i'm just going to write in big block letters memorize okay it's not it's not i don't think that's too much um, just just a small amount of stuff for you to memorize um, if we had a little more time, I would maybe spend a little more time doing this, but this is intended to be a review. Um, so, so this shouldn't be the very first time that you've seen um, trigonometry. That There should be at, at least one point before where you've seen sine, cos, and tan. Um, if you've never seen sine, cos, and tan, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I, I don't mind helping you out. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the fact that you haven't seen this if, if you hadn't seen this before. But I also don't want to spend lots of time in class discussing something uh, that is not from this class. It's from a year prior. So um, sine, cos, and tan, Sokotoa. Uh, we've got the opposite adjacent hypotenuse, a right angle. Usually we call the angle theta. Uh, sometimes we call it uh, alpha. Oops alpha or beta sometimes we use gamma um, there's there's all sorts of cool greek letters that you can use in trigonometry um, but usually we we use the the letter theta 
Um, so those are some things that um, we need to make sure that we, we have an understanding of, okay? Um, so I think I, th I think that's where we're going to leave it now. Just just a, a quick little recap of of the stuff that um, I'm I'm hoping you already know. And if if you don't, then then please let me know um, either uh, like by Google Classroom or Instagram or uh, however you prefer uh, to contact me. Email is also really good. Um, and and uh, if you do need a little bit of uh, a refresher on this stuff, I, I can give you some materials to to practice. Um, because yeah, I don't think that you'll find uh, this in the textbook. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of stuff uh, that, that could help you out, but I think that just having a good understanding of what this is, is, is really gonna help you out. So I'm gonna end it there, and let's see. I'll do, for the exit slip, I'll, I'll ask you to answer the same question I asked everyone else for today. Uh, do you plan on using Dropbox? Boy, I, I could like really use this data to see if Dropbox could give me money. It could be like, look, I just recruited 16 people to Dropbox. What's in it for me? Um, yeah, and uh, <laughs> exactly. So if not, Please don't do that. <laughs> but I, I appreciate uh, I appreciate the enthusiasm. Um, but that sounds like a lot of extra work um, for both of us. So if not, uh, do you already use something similar? Yeah. Okay. So there's there's the exit slip for today. Just. Uh, do you, do you, are, are you gonna use Dropbox? Do you think do you think that that, uh, that that's a good service? Uh, even even just for PDFs. I mean, it, I, I mean I don't see why not. But uh, maybe you already use a different service or what have you. So let me know, and because uh, I am interested to to see what I can expect in terms of the PDF submissions for the the final exam and stuff. I don't know if you can hear that. Goose is sneezing. Let's see if I can catch one on camera. Goosey sneezing? No, I think she's done now. Yeah. Yeah. She. Um, we both have allergies, Goose and I and they just cleaned our streets. So there's a lot of dust in the air. So the two of us have been sneezing all day. Okay, I'm gonna sign out. Uh, so we'll pick up where we left off tomorrow in terms of um, uh, trigonometry. So this is the, the, the knowledge that I'm, I'm hoping uh, you have either seen already or can take it upon yourselves to memorize and um, uh, let me know if, if you need some more help. So. There you have it. Um, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.